Hey guys, Claire here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make an absolute fall classic, a pumpkin roll. This is my twist on a pumpkin roll though, so you're gonna see a lot of spices, and I'm also going to add a little bit of an espresso swirl to the center. So this is going to be a pumpkin spiced latte roll. So yes, I'm going for those Pinterest likes. That is definitely what's happening right now. Um, it's also kind of intimidating because anytime you do a roll, it's a little stressful because you don't want it to crack. You want to get that really beautiful swirl in the center. So later on, I'll show you a bunch of tips and tricks to really get a successful swirl. First, we have to actually bake the cake, right? It's essentially kind of like a sponge cake uh, in texture. So I have three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of pumpkin puree. I have a spice mixture I put together. So it's a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of ginger, and then a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. You can do whatever blend you want or just a pumpkin spice blend is fine too. I then have a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, a cup of sugar, and then three eggs. So I'm gonna combine all of my dry ingredients first and then the wet. So I'm just gonna mix this whole thing together so there's no lumps, there's no sort of pockets of spices or pockets of baking soda. So next I'm just gonna add the eggs and I'm gonna start blending it together. So next I'm going to add in the pumpkin puree and I'm gonna add the apple cider vinegar right on top. All right, this looks great. It has a really nice thick texture. And I'm actually going to bake this off in a jelly roll pan. This I think is just a rimmed baking sheet to be honest, but it's 15 by 10 inches. And it's cause I want it to be really thin cause I'm rolling it. So if it's too thick, it's not gonna work. So I've sprayed it and lined it with parchment. Of course, one end won't stop curling up. So I'm going to pour it from this side first and then hopefully that'll keep this one in line. All right, so I'm just gonna spread this all the way to the edges and it's gonna be really thin. So don't get stressed if you're like, this isn't enough batter. It is enough batter. Trust in yourself. So I'm now gonna bake this off at 375 for just like 15 minutes. It bakes really quickly and that's because it's so thin. All right, so into the oven it goes. All right, the pumpkin roll is done and this next part happens pretty quickly. So definitely just like hold on to your pants because it's gonna happen all at once. So my pumpkin roll is out of the oven. Hmm, beautiful, it smells great. So the first thing I'm going to do is these ends that did not get protected by the parchment. I'm just gonna use a knife and kind of lift them up. So now I have my lint-free tea towel. So you can get this kind of honestly anywhere, but use the kind, it's kind of like a flour sack towel um, or like a linen rather than like a towel towel with like terry cloth, cause that's just gonna be a disaster. All right, so I have this with my cooling rack underneath and I'm gonna try to keep them pretty taut. The way I'm gonna do that is by kind of holding one side like so layering this over it and then just pulling the tea towel out so it has like a nice kind of tightness to it. Okay, a moment of truth. Stressful, okay. Boom. And the parchment should peel off pretty easily. Oh, thank God, all right. Did not embarrass myself on the internet today. So that's good. All right, this looks really nice. So now, just so it doesn't fold over itself, I'm gonna tuck this side of the towel like this. And using the towel, I'm going to pre-roll it. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. It's not breaking. So now that I made it through that stress test, um, I am going to let this rest for about 20 minutes in this position and then unroll it and let it finish cooling. This is kind of prepping it. It's gonna, you'll see, it'll curl up at the edges a little bit, but this means that when I add my cream cheese frosting with the espresso glaze on top, it'll roll up really nicely. 
All right, well, while this cools and hangs out, I'm gonna get started on making the filling. So for this, I'm making a cream cheese frosting and then also a melted chocolate and espresso powder combination. So to make the cream cheese frosting, it's really easy. The big thing is temperature. You wanna make sure that your cream cheese and butter are perfectly soft and ready to come together. That's why I'm able to use hand beaters. If you aren't sure and you're like, oh, my butter's hard, just make sure to whip it really fully using a, like a mixer with a paddle. That's gonna give you the texture that you're looking for. So to make the cream cheese frosting, I have about two sticks worth or eight ounces of cream cheese softened. I have three ounces of unsalted butter. And then I have basically, I mean, the powdered sugar is kind of like use as much as you want, but I'd say it's about like a cup to two cups. Um, somewhere between there is gonna give you the texture you're looking for. I have a teaspoon of vanilla, a little bit of salt, like a quarter teaspoon. And then the chocolate espresso, it's honestly kind of like, what do you feel like? I'm, this is like a half cup worth of chocolate melted. And then I have a half teaspoon of espresso powder. The reason why I'm not using espresso from the machine is because the water in the espresso causes the chocolate to like seize. So first I'm gonna put in the cream cheese and I'm just gonna whip it up. Then I'm gonna add the softened butter and whip that into it. So next I'm gonna add the salt and then I'm gonna start adding a little bit of the powdered sugar. That is like a perfect texture. So I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna add the vanilla extract and then finish whipping it, moving on to the chocolate. And then yeah, this is pretty easy. I'm just literally putting the espresso powder on top of the melted chocolate and then mixing it together. So this guy has cooled for about 20 minutes or so. So now I'm gonna start actually unrolling it. -na 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 -na. So these little cracks, it's a bummer, but don't stress about it too much. You just don't want it to crack through the middle, like meaning all the way through the edge so you have like a broken edge in your beautiful, perfect pinwheel. So first I'm going to put the cream cheese frosting on top and spread it out really evenly. So don't stress out too much about going all the way to the edges on here. The only place you really have to go all the way up is on this last little like interior part. So now I'm gonna take the chocolate and I'm just going to kind of dot it across and then I'm gonna use the spoon, just kind of swirling it in like this. And I'm gonna roll it up without using the towel. Okay, successfully rolled up. I have a big piece of plastic wrap. And so I'm going to now roll the whole thing up in the plastic wrap. So this is now ready to sit in the fridge and it does need to sit in the fridge. Um, overnight is fine. Um, I'd say at least for a few hours though. All right, cool, so this is going into the fridge and then once it's fully set, I'm gonna slice it up. This pumpkin roll is out of the fridge. It's cold to the touch. It feels very set. So I'm feeling pretty confident about this. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually cut off the edges because no one's got time for that. Ooh, but sneak peek, hell yeah. Look at that swirl. So these are personal, you can eat these if you're like the chef, so. I'm gonna do both ends. And I'd also recommend like, you know, smoothing this off with a towel between slices in case you get any of the frosting on it. The pumpkin roll is finished and I don't feel so stressed about it. So if you want to, you can do a little bit of powdered sugar and then same idea with a tiny bit of cinnamon. And just be careful, cinnamon comes out real fast. It's much finer than the powdered sugar. I don't wanna mess this up, so I'm gonna eat one of the rejects. <laughs> okay. That's really good. The pumpkin and spice is really subtle. There's just a little bit of the espresso and chocolate that comes through but it doesn't overpower anything. It's just kind of a background note. And the cream cheese frosting is so good. I hope you guys have success with yours. Please comment below if you do make it. Like the video if you like it. And yeah, for the full recipe, make sure to check out my blog if you wanna have it all written out. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.